Hi Fixers, today we're going to be looking at the Kaiwheat KM601 digital multimeter, but why? Well, it's a topic that comes up a lot and some people who've never used a multimeter sometimes ask me if they'd know how to use one, is it useful for them? And the answer is yes. So I think that budget digital multimeters or budget multimeters in general have a place within everybody's home whether it's checking continuity on a fuse or just seeing if batteries have got any juice left, it's always worth having even a cheapie lying around the house. And this, what's not quite a cheapie, is probably quite a capable little unit. In the past, there was what could be described as snobbery around multimeters. But these days, with the prevalence of the microchip, lots of meters are very, very capable within a really affordable range. And I'm hoping that we'll find out that this is one of those so we're going to take it on a test drive and we're going to do it right now. Mark fixes stuff. So here we are. And as much as I hate unboxings, let's unbox this sucker. There's not a huge amount of information on the back, so let's just get straight inside. As we open the box, we find a rather nice foam formed case. I wasn't expecting that. It's a nice little extra. For this quick look, we'll just be covering the functions that I use regularly and seeing if this meter can pass muster. And I have no idea what we're going to find inside this case. Once inside, we find what looks like a nice set of test probes. Not the usual low budget ones that you get with cheap meters. And we also find a user manual, which I'll probably not read. But the meter looks nice and shiny, and we like shiny things, don't we? It's a lot thicker than it looked in the pictures. A fairly nice handful. On the top we have the power button and a non-contact power detector that I'm not going to go near because I don't want to get sued if someone drills through a live wire. The probes do look decent though. That's quite surprising for a budget multimeter. They're usually just one colour and pretty flimsy. And this is a temperature probe which I probably won't use. I hope to goodness it doesn't take six AAA batteries. That would be hideous. To install the batteries, we need to do a bit of wrestling, but eventually using both my hands, I managed to pull it off. Having pulled off the rubber, underneath we find a screw that secures the battery compartment. Time to grab our tools and start screwing. Removing the cover shows that we only need three of the AAA batteries. Credit to Kaiweats for providing two sets. And they're very shiny. I've never had any manufacturer provide two sets of batteries in my whole life. Actually makes me wonder if it might have been a mistake. Okay, I think we need to remove this screen protector. Get ready for satisfaction. Satisfying peel. Oh yeah. Screen size wise, it's pretty big. In fact, it's 3.5 inches diagonally and I think three and a half inches is pretty big. A nice feature is it shows the ambient temperature. 
and the filming lights are warm. The inputs have LED indicators so you know where to put your probe in. The big red button switches us out of manual mode and through a variety of functions. I can't cover all of these so I'll just do the ones that I use the most. We can see that different modes indicate the inputs and that is a nice feature. If you have the leads connected wrong, you'll get lead displayed on the screen. Let's push in our probes and have a test of some of the features that I use on a daily basis. The probes have removable covers which is a nice touch. A good sign is that it can measure the resistance of my skin at around 11 mega ohms. But let's have a more practical test, one that I might do on a daily basis. These 4.7 kilo ohm resistors measure as they should. In fact, some of them are spot on. Back when I was a young fixer, I could read the bands on these, but these days I find it really difficult. Quickly whipping out your unit and measuring the resistance is a lot easier. Most of the time us fixers find ourselves working with DC voltages. As a little test, let's check out this brand new 9 volt battery. Now this isn't a great test of battery health, but if you get 9.4 volts off of one of these batteries, you can pretty much guarantee it's not been used. That's a good result. Pressing the big red button switches us in and out of auto mode and in between the functions of the meter. Pressing select selects functions within that group. And pressing range changes the scale of the measurement. As I said before, there's a lot of functions here and I don't want to cover them all in this video. So we'll just do a couple of things that I use often. By pressing select, we can switch between AC and DC, with AC showing the frequency of the supply in Hertz. As we toggle back to DC, we can see that that goes back to the ambient temperature in the room. In DC mode, pressing the range button changes the magnitude of the measurement. We can see the decimal point moving with each press. Pressing the button again advances to the next manual mode, which is resistance. And a long press on the red button takes us back into auto mode. Let's switch the continuity and diode check mode and test this fuse. The meter is very responsive and showed us immediately that the fuse is okay. Another thing I need to regularly check are diodes and transistors. This transistor should only let the current flow in one direction from each of the leads. It's fine this way and gives us the expected reading for flowing over the junction. And this way is good too. With the negative probe on the middle leg, the transistor junction should block the current, which they do. Brilliant! Another thing that I regularly check is capacitance. This capacitor should be about 100 microfarads, plus or minus 10%. Putting the meter into capacitance mode, we can see it defaults to nanofarads, but should also range to microfarads as we measure. As I place the probes on the capacitor, it shows that the part is around 92.2 microfarads. Not the best, but still within spec. Some larger capacitors will take longer to give a reading. And for the final thing we're going to do in this small test of the multimeter, I'm going to grab one of my little parts. 
This is a 104 coded 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and reads out well at around 101 nanofarads. So in conclusion, I like this meter. It's cheapish, works well and it's easier to film. Big thanks to Kaiwitz for sending it my way and really big thanks to my amazing patrons appearing on the screen right now. Patrons really drive Markfix's stuff and they get early ad-free access to all my videos. You can become one by visiting patreon.com forward slash Markfix's stuff. Or if you want to give me a tip, come along to coffee forward slash Markfix's stuff and buy me a coffee. Or you don't have to do anything, you can just watch the video. In fact, don't go anywhere because at the end of this, I'm going to ask you to watch another video. YouTube really likes it when you do that, so uh, if you wouldn't mind, it would be amazing if you um, clicked one of these. Thank you. Bye. Bye.